Hello everyone and welcome to S3 Biology. It's Mrs Anderson here. I hope you're all safe and doing well. We have been looking at the best way to teach the S3 Biology course and have decided to use the following structure. Each week we are going to put a narrated PowerPoint presentation along with revision materials onto Teams. We want you to access these as best you can to help you learn the course at home. As well as this, you have revision questions to complete and at the end of the week we will put up a quiz via the assignment section in Teams for you to complete and then submit. One of the biology teachers will be on hand to answer any questions that you may have via Teams. In S3, you will be working through the Level 4 and National 5 material. It is important that you understand the concepts we are introducing as this will all help you in S4. This means if you're unsure of anything, please let us know and we can help you out. We have two learning intentions this week. The first is to name and describe the function of the five parts of the animal cell. And the second is to calculate the length and breadth of one cell. In first year, you learned about the structure of animal cells. I'm going to give you 10 seconds. Can you match the cell structure to the letter on the diagram? Okay, so well done if you've got this correct. A was the cell membrane, B was the nucleus, and C was the cytoplasm. In National 5 Biology, you're required to know five structures. Structures can sometimes be called organelles as well. As well as knowing the structure's names, you also need to know each of their specific functions. Three of these you have already heard of before, the nucleus, the cell membrane and the cytoplasm. There are two new structures and these are called the ribosomes which are usually represented by small dots and mitochondria which look like baguettes or small structures with squiggly lines in them. We're now going to look at all of these structures in a wee bit more detail. The nucleus is the part of the cell that controls all the cell's activity. It also contains all the genetic information, which we also know is called DNA. The nucleus is usually represented in diagrams by a black dot. Sometimes it can be tricky to identify the nucleus in a diagram, however. It can look like a large black dot, or in harder diagrams like this one, the nucleus can look like a circular structure with a black dot in the middle. The cell membrane controls what substances enter and exit the cell. It is a selectively permeable membrane, which means it only allows specific molecules through the membrane. These are usually small molecules like oxygen and water. The cell membrane is represented by a line around the outside of the cell. The cytoplasm is next. This is where chemical reactions occur. It's the space within the cell that contains all the other organelles. The first new structure is called a ribosome. The main function of ribosomes is to make all the proteins within the cell. It is the site of protein synthesis. Ribosomes are usually represented by small black dots in cell diagrams. Sometimes, however, it can be tricky to identify the ribosomes in a diagram. This is because the black dots can either float in the cytoplasm or they can be attached to a structure like the one in this PowerPoint slide. As long as you remember that the ribosomes are small black dots, 
regardless of if they float by themselves or are kind of parked on this structure here. This is an example of an animal cell. The small black dots are called the ribosomes and you can see they're just parked on this structure here. Again, this is another example of an animal cell. The black dots are both in the cytoplasm and also attached to a structure. The final organelle is called the mitochondria. The main function of the mitochondria is to create energy through a process called aerobic respiration. It is the site of aerobic respiration. Mitochondria are represented by oval shaped structures with squiggly lines within it, as shown in the diagram on the PowerPoint. Mitochondria are responsible for making the cell's energy to carry out biological processes in the body. Therefore, the higher energy requirements a cell has, the higher the number of mitochondria that will be present. To understand what I am meaning, we will use a muscle cell as an example. Muscle cells require a lot of energy to contract and relax. This means they have a high number of mitochondria to allow them to create all of this energy. Sperm cells also require a lot of energy to move their tail so they can swim to the egg and fertilise it. This means that they have a high number of mitochondria to create all of that energy. Skin cells, however, do not require a lot of energy. This means that they have a low number of mitochondria within their cells. So let's just take a second to recap. There are five key organelles in the animal cell. The nucleus controls all cell activity. The cell membrane controls the entry and exit of substances. The cytoplasm controls where chemical reactions occur. The ribosomes are the site of protein synthesis and the mitochondria are the site of aerobic respiration. We have looked at learning intention one to name and describe the function of the five parts of the animal cell. Now we are going to calculate the length and breadth of one cell. Cells are microscopic in size. You cannot see them with the naked eye. We need to use a microscope to see them. If you use a microscope to visualise cells, this may be what shows up, so this kind of diagram here. We can use a calculation to work out the length and the breadth of one of these cells in the diagram. If you have a calculator or a phone with a calculator, I'd make sure you have it handy just now. Okay, so in these calculations, length is going across the diagram, like the length of a football field, while breadth is going down the diagram. If we are working out the length of one cell, you need to know the total length and the number of cells that are going across. In this example, the total length is two millimetres. We can see that in the diagram itself. And the number of cells going across is five cells. You then divide the total length by the number of cells going across. So two millimetres is divided by five cells and this gives you 0 0.4 millimetres. This means that 0 0.4 millimetres is the length of each cell. This means that a cell in this sample has a length of 0 0.4 millimetres as shown in this diagram here. So each of these cells will have a length of 0 0.4 millimetres. If we are working out the breadth of one cell, you need to know the total breadth, which is the same as the length as it is a circle we're working with, and the number of cells that are going down. In this example, the total breadth is two millimetres, and the number of cells that are going down is 10 cells. 
You then divide the total breadth by the number of cells going down. So two millimetres is divided by 10 cells. And this gives you 0 0.2 millimetres, which is the breadth of one cell. So each cell has 0 0.2 millimetres in breadth. This means that the cell, the cells or any cell in this sample has a breadth of 0 0.2 millimetres. OK, I'm going to let you try this one out. Take 30 seconds. What is the total length? How many cells are going to cross? Once you know that, divide the total length by the number of cells going across. Okay, so what you should have hopefully worked out was the total length is four millimetres. It gives you that in the diagram. The number of cells going across is five cells. So you just count one, two, three, four, five. Four millimetres need to be divided by those five cells. And that gives you an answer of 0 0.8 millimetres. This means that each cell is 0 0.8 millimetres in length. Okay. So last one, let's do this. Take 30 seconds. What is the total breadth? How many cells are going down this time? And divide the total breadth by the number of cells going down. Okay, so the total breadth is the exact same as the total length. It's four millimetres. It gives you it in the diagram. The number of cells going down is 10 cells. So four millimetres divided by 10 cells gives you 0 0.4 millimetres. This means that each cell is 0 0.4 millimetres in breadth. So to recap, the two learning intentions today were to name and describe the function of the five parts of the animal cell and to calculate the length and breadth of one cell. Now that we've went through the PowerPoint, these are the revision tools we are advising you to use. The revision notes can be found in the file sections of Teams. If you look at pages one and page four, this gives you all the information you need this week about animal cells and microscope calculations. You can also look at the BBC Bite Size website for additional help. I've attached the link to the PowerPoint. Finally, if you type in study stack and in the search bar type St Ninian's HS, this will come up with loads of flashcards. Click on the CB Animal Sales link to get the flashcards for the topic we have just covered. This week we have two assessment materials for you to complete. The first are revision questions for you to download and complete. If you can't do this, write these on a sheet of paper. The second is an animal sales quiz on Teams. Once you have completed this, you must submit it. This will show us that you have completed the task. Please let us know if you're having any trouble accessing documents on Teams. And thanks for listening.